What is the first thing a smart horse buyer does? Just this. Sure, he knows it's more than appearances that count with a horse. And if you're wise, you'll do the same thing when it comes to buying a truck. Yes, sir, you look under the hood. Because here is where truck buying begins. Let's start under the hood, Wayne. What do, you, uh, what do we got under here? Well, first of all, we've got a Ford 390 that's been bored 60 over. We had an issue where we broke some uh, compression rings going down to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Uh, never scored a block, but we had it rebuilt, just 60 over, just to make sure everything's clean and straight. Uh, I put a Spectra cold air system on it because under the hood with that big block, it gets a little warm. We've got a Walker Cobra Z series radiator on it. Kind of We've got there, yeah. Benny Jair. Uh, we put the stainless steel fender wells in it. Basically, what I was trying to go for the look was this is the way Henry Ford should have made it. <laughs> you know, this is it's a good down the road driver. Yeah. Got 275 gears and a narrowed rear end, which quick performance narrowed for me down in Ames. I've got a C6 behind it. I've got 30 and a half inch tall tires. So even though it doesn't have overdrive, it acts like it does. Yeah. And I've got enough torque in the big block that it will get up and go. I mean, it's got more than enough power to run this down the road at 70, 75 mile an hour all day long. I do have uh, Dakota Digital Cruise Control on it. It's got a 1979 Velari front suspension on it with a sway bar. I do have a sway bar in the back. I am still running the uh, repopped leaf springs. Uh, the original springs had a couple that were broke, so I replaced them with stock original springs. Uh, amazing with the leaf springs. People don't give them enough credit. It rides like a car. Yeah. So very smooth. I have power brakes. I ended up going with a uh, hyper. Uh, can't even remember what it is. Hydrotech. Hydrotech hydraulic brake booster on it just to give it a little more braking power because the vacuum with a seven inch uh, booster just wasn't enough. Not okay. enough brake. So as heavy as vehicles it is, I wanted good brake so I ended up going with a Hydrotech uh, brake booster okay. on it. And it runs off of power steering pumps and she's got she's got brakes now. What do you have uh, for Actual calipers and stuff like that. Is that actually the, the true Valari? Okay. The actual so. the Valari. I think they're 10 inch rotors with uh, stock uh, calipers on it. I'm running 8 inch rims up front, 8 inches in the back, just enough just to fill out the fender wells. I didn't want them overly big. I didn't want. I wanted a kind of a stock appearing look, but I wanted to get more tread under it just so it drove and ride, rode better. Yeah, and to kind of hold the big block. Yep. Very much. Because, uh, see, in 56, would this have been a flathead original still, or would that have been a really This wide originally block? had an overhead valve six cylinder in it. Oh, okay. With the three speed overdrive. Okay. So it was a work truck, but it was meant to run down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, the three speed overdrive was gone when I bought the truck. I bought the truck when I was 18 years old, so that was 41 years ago. Um, this is probably its third rendition, you might want to call it. I, uh, when I first bought it, I bought it for $50 from a farmer up by Storm Lake where we grew, where I grew up. We grew up on a dairy farm. Um, I was happy as all get out, even with the holes in the floor. So I got really wet when it rained. <laughs> it just, it was my first vehicle. This is the very first vehicle I ever bought. And I've had it, like I said, for 41 years. And that just makes it special too because yeah. Uh, They'll never. A lot of people let those things go. Yep. Um, yours truly included. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sure I'll regret it, and most people usually do. Yeah. So. As long as I'm alive, it'll be with us. So it was pretty. It was pretty roached out when you got it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Front had big dents in the front fenders up here. Uh, normal uh, mid 50s pickups. They were rusted around the headlights up here. The front balance was destroyed. Running boards are pretty much gone. Um, the cowl sides, they were all rusted. The doors are rusted across the bottom. Uh, 
cab corners, normal, yeah. typical. Salt cab trails. corners were gone, and then the filler plates right here were gone. But the box, fenders, the doors, the cab, hood, fenders are all original. The only thing that has been replaced is sheet metal wise is the front balance, the running boards, and then the filler panels. Everything else has either been repaired, yeah, just been repaired. Yeah. Because I wanted to keep as much of the original. Tailgate's been replaced because the tailgate was gone. Yeah. But the glass, uh, glass was all original, but it started delaminating. Front windshield is original. Uh, the side glass windows are original, but the actual big windows have been replaced. And the back windshield, or the back window, when they were doing body work, when he was putting it in, cracked, so it's new. Okay. It cracked when he was putting it back in. Part of, part of it, that's what happens. Oh, yeah. Like I said, the, the Valari came with a sway bar up front, and I ended up putting a sway bar in the back just to stiffen it up because like I said we go around corners you know on the interstate 70 75 mile an hour and it's meant to run we like I said we've been down to Pigeon Forge Tennessee with it we've been up to the show uh, up in Minneapolis back to the 50s numerous times um, we've been out to Deadwood South Dakota for the cool Deadwood nights uh, we've gone a couple times up to Wisconsin for the uh, F100 uh, dash to the Dells. It's all F100 trucks this style, and we're not afraid to drive it. I mean, it's this is what it is. It is it is built to drive. If you can't build them to drive them, don't build them. How many thumbs up do you get when you're driving down the road with your truck and your trailer? Yeah. Do they give you a thumbs up for your trailer? No. They're built to drive. Yeah. You know, as you can tell, if you look at the front of mine, if you look close, the hood's got rot her chips in it oh, yeah. it's got chips across the hood you know it yeah, happens a dead bug here and there yeah. it's honest wear yeah for you know an honest truck right now i think we've got i think thirty six thousand miles on it so like i said and that's since it's been rebuilt this way how long ago was that oh uh, we were trying to figure out i think that's been 18 years ago about around 2000 okay was when we started doing it early night or late 1990s early 2000s okay. and we've had it on the road i think since about 2001 to somewhere right in there so a friend of mine over in storm lake tom snyder did the snyder auto body did the paint but it drives nice and then with a the torsion bar front what's nice is you can get on it with a three quarter inch drive socket and ratchet and you can adjust your ride height yeah you can get it down to right where you exactly where you want it and it still rides like a car yeah and if you want to do out the coil suspension you're ended up clipping coils right or exactly taking the, this, the, this la the just, lazy way out and heating them like some of those yeah. guys do on those this you just get underneath crank on them mm -hmm. get it adjusted we've had our close calls with deer yeah driving at night different critters but it's still high enough stuff that we have accidentally run over that is already it, dead it goes under it it goes under it yeah you know, that's why I didn't put it on air. You know, air's good, but I like springs because now what happens if I pop an airbag? Yeah. Now, because this one. You do that a thousand miles from home, you're looking at quite the healthy bill. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. now you're taking it to a shop and going to have to have it fixed. Besides the overnighting of your parts, this tried and true, you know, factory yeah. suspension and it works. Yeah. If something breaks, you can go to an O'Reilly's and get it. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yep. There you go. Well, let's uh, let's uh, take a look at the interior then, and okay. then we'll uh, take a look at what you did with the bed and everything. Okay. So what do we Start got going with on the, here? the instrument cluster. Basically, I got that through mid '50s out of Arizona. Um, back when we built this, we didn't have a lot of money, so we were kind of went to the cheaper style of things. So we just basically got a set of VDO gauges with their aluminum um, cluster insert. Uh, we pretty much got everything, a lot of stuff through mid 50s and Speedway Motors. Speedway's got a lot of parts, but they have a tendency to lend towards uh, either the really older Fords or the Chevys. Yeah. So a lot of stuff for this basically came out of mid 50s. The steering column we got out of junkyard, it's out of a 79 Cadillac Eldorado. 
it telescopes and it also tilts our, our tele telescopes and tilts because yeah. my wife she's five foot four yeah. want to be able to so she can drive it yeah and I'm six one and you're a little taller than me yeah so. six five there so. You go. so so we put that in the panel underneath I built out of aluminum put my gauges radio my air conditioning uh, stuff in that um, I've got a 12 disc CD changer in here with an AM FM cassette the seats are out of an 08 Cadillac CTS which were highly modified we had to take a bunch out of the back padding out of the back side of it to get them to sit far enough back uh, just removed a bunch of padding out of it they were they're air conditioned and they're heated which is nice yep and uh, got a 12 disc CD changer that sits under here just hit everything okay and that little box there yep, yep sits under here uh, got a console in the middle which we can store sunglasses and our junk and everything else and pop holder and then it's even got a console underneath there you go so it feels like a modern car it drives like a modern yeah. car but it's the best of the old and yeah. the best of the new yeah yep. yeah because what else everybody else looks the same going down that's yeah. the problem with the new cars these days so, uh who modified the seats then uh the the gal up in uh dakota city iowa by the name of gord upholstery okay she did the seats we discussed it we talked about how we wanted it done we came up with this we got the material actually through her but it matches what i got through uh, mid 50s mid 50s has the material she put the red piping in it to match the color um, the gal downtown she's got a sewing shop sewed in the Ford emblem in it we had to buy the patent rights pay for the patent rights to oh, really put the Ford yeah. script in it yeah. so but now I own the rights for this pattern but the interior we did ourselves except for modifying the seats and upholstering the seats okay. we did the floor the sound deadening the panel the headliner the side panels the back wall uh build all that yep okay so clearly it's not an open bed first of all <laughs> first of all we got a door yep i took the gas tank out of the back of the box because i didn't want to be sitting on top of a big bomb so there you go. i wanted to be able to fill up without you know well oh, having to open this up so if it's raining our luggage and stuff wouldn't chairs and stuff wouldn't all get wet and then got locks on it so nobody can i can lock this panel i can lock this up so it completely locks everything down yep i'm stealing your gas that way at least <laughs> can't get him get into the box yeah then we open it up we got a 12 volt cooler which I've got underneath that box there is a uh, just literally you want to grab that is an open box where I can put tools spare tire and we have a spare an extra battery up there which is the deep cycle battery which I can plug my cooler in and sit at a show all day I don't have to worry about ice and uh, keeping our refreshments cold and once I'm driving down the road I can flip a switch and actually turn it on and charge that battery while I'm driving around. I actually have two batteries in the truck. One's for the start and then running, and one is strictly for the cooler. Okay. We have room for chairs. We have room for our luggage, stuff like that. And then we actually have a pant box for the cleaning supplies. Because yep. if you go to a show, you got to clean. You got to wipe her down when you get there. You got to clean. And then in behind here, I can put extra oil, antifreeze, whatever. Just always always got stuff with you because you never know when you're going to need it yep we have supports up front that actually came off of the old ford aerostar vans okay they're starting to get weak and that's why it's not holding it up anymore because this lid's real heavy yeah so but i'm finally finding the part number where i can get them now and i'm going to eventually replace these so they will stand up on their own okay but i got vents in it to keep air moving so i'll keep my cooler cool and and uh just keep everything dried out i have lights in it i have lights mounted under there so if we're in the dark and i have actually have rope light in the box to uh so if at night we have to change tires or whatever uh, you can go around the front side you'll see there's rope light on the inside of it Let's see if i can get it on camera without 
Let's see if I raise it up a little higher. There we go. There I got go. it. Because this was originally going to be my everyday work truck. Well, but it turned out too nice. So we built this box to go inside of it. So if we needed to use it for a pickup, we could. I can slide this out, set it on some saw horses, and now I got a pickup. But now it don't come out anymore because, like I said, the truck turned out too nice and we just strictly go to shows yeah. with it. You get it too nice, you're afraid of undoing all that, that work on yeah. it. Yeah, so. yes. Now the bed liner, I remember when I first talked to you, you mentioned something interesting about that, how uh, yeah, when they put it on, they put it on too high. Too high, yeah. But I'm glad they did. It's uh, the guy that painted it, Tom Snyder, at Snyder Auto Body in Storm Lake, he also does bed lining. This is speed liner. They mix the paint right in with the bed liner. So even if you scratch this, it still says the color. He was only supposed to go to this high, but his hired guy, uh, misunderstood him and he painted the end. Okay. Which I'm glad he did. I was a little upset at first, but I'm glad he did because the first thing people do when they come and they talk to you is they do this. They lean on it. They lean on it. And they got metal zippers and all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, so it actually protects the edge of it so it doesn't scratch and it still matches the color of the truck. Happy accident. Yes. We're not afraid to drive them. Yeah. You know. That's what I like. That's you know, the guy I did the first episode with, he's got 40-something thousand miles on his since he yeah. rebuilt it. Yeah, we've got, I think, just under 37,000 on this right now. But what we eventually want to do is I'm looking at putting fuel injection on top of it. Going, keeping the look. So I'm looking at like either a Holly Sniper or a Fitec yeah. fuel injection. That's uh, the guy I did the first episode with, if you watch that one. Uh, his broke down on us the first day of shooting. Oh, really? And, uh, he had been fighting vapor lock. Well, it turns out his fuel pump had died. Yeah. And ever since then, every time I run into him, because he was like three blocks from me, he's always talking about, like, I'm so tempted. I, I'm, I keep looking at fuel injection. Yeah. I keep looking at it. Because he's talking about maybe, you know, wanting to put a bigger motor in anyway. And yeah. he's like, I'll get more out of it. So what are you running for compression then? About 10 and a half? I would say it's pretty close yeah. with stock iron heads. Yeah. And so those, those, FE, even... those FEs don't really like high compression. No. no. Now, well, <laughs> they well, do. They make well, a they, good they, race motor, but. Yeah, they, they like it. I'm just, uh, modern gas doesn't like it. Yeah, mod it, it doesn't like yeah. modern yeah. gas. Yeah, that's pretty it yeah. That way, yeah. That's why I've got to run ethanol in it because ethanol burns a little slower yeah. and takes the pinging out of it. Mm -hmm. And You've talked about our 46. We went to the drag strip one time. She was in this, and I was in our 46, and we lined up against each other. Arm drop start. Eighth mile. I got a 351 Windsor in it. I beat her in the eighth mile, but as heavy as what this is, the tall gears, the tall tires, quarter mile, she would have beat me. Yeah. I wish Benson's out of Minnesota makes an adapter kit where you can put an AOD behind this mm -hmm. but it it works so well now why mess with it yeah because like i said it uh, maybe if you tear it down in the future to redo it again then you do it kind of a thing but yeah why yeah. mess my why mess with a, a something that right you now it's working because it even running down the road at 75 mile an hour i'm turning about 26 yeah which is not bad no no 390 is a torque motor it's a, yeah it's stroke it's, and the cam that's in it is basically one step above stock. It's a comp 260 eight hydraulic lifter cam. And then what I did is I got an adjustable timing chain. I actually put another four degrees advance okay. into it that. So we're getting the cylinders full and gives it a lot more power, a lot more torque. Yeah. Because that's what I want. I'm if this is not a screaming truck, it's not high RPM. No. I want everything from here to about four grand. Yeah, FEs usually weren't screamers. I mean, no, they're a torque motor. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I want. Your 427s could, but yeah. even then they like to blow. Right, unless right. Unless they have the side oil. And I'm talking, you need torque to get something. I have never have weighed this, but it's got to be all of probably 4,500 pounds, yeah. if not more. You know, so it it gets it going. It It's a full frame truck and, you know, it's a brick in the wind. Yeah. So you got to fight, like gotta fight said, that too. One of the most aerodynamic trucks you know you've got bubbles everywhere yeah so it catches a lot of air yeah so and it's a flat front you know yeah flat front scooped yeah flat you know not quite a stand-up windshield but pretty close it's got the stock little visor on it mm -hmm. well i think i think the best we've ever got out of it i think was 13 miles a gallon but 
It's a big block and it's a big it's truck. It's a big block so. and it's a big truck and it's most on an aerodynamic. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're going for fuel economy, you'd have put no. a 302 in an overdrive and yeah. it would have been a mutt, but you'd go 75 it, down the road and get yeah. probably but, 18 to 20. Yeah, but like I said, so the motor is real close to the era of yeah. the truck. So, yeah. you it's know. It's kind of like what a kid would have bought a used truck and shoehorned a brand new motor. Right, in back in the day. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. So. So that's why we didn't put mags on it. You know, we stayed with the stock style rims. Mm -hmm. Their uh, wheels are from Wheels Vintique. The original style, just a little wider. Because mm -hmm. like I said, I wanted to put little bigger tires underneath it just to fill out the fender wells and yeah, make it look right. The old school pizza cutter ones are a bit sketchy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Yep. So mm -hmm. the tire shop up here, Pingle Tire, they helped me figure out what size rims I needed and what size tires. and matches up pretty good it's nice it's, it's what it's, it is it stands out it's something you know you roll down the street and you can hold your head high yeah you know my dad asked me one time when he was when i started building this 29 where i learned how to do this and i told him i said dad dad stop and think about it i said uh you know what did we do our whole life well he sat there and he was looked at his friend and he was going man i don't know he says i said we farmed right he said yeah we melt cows I said, well, what did we also do? We fixed our own machinery on the farm. I lost my dad just a hair over two years ago, and I lost my best friend. Yeah. And, you know, it's, he taught me how to do this. He never taught, you know, we never, he never opened the box up to see what he could do. But basically, wheels have to go around, mm -hmm. they have to move up and down, and you got to drive it. Yeah. You know, yeah. He so, gave you this. He taught you the essential basics, skills. Yeah. The essential skills, yeah. the basic. Yeah. And I, I hope he's proud. Yeah. Oh. I hope he looks down and he's proud. He should be. He should be. I mean, you know, this is, this is a damn nice truck. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Wayne and Rita, for letting me film your 1956 Ford. They also own a very cool whiskey hauler 46 Ford that we hope to do in a future episode. Wayne is currently building a 1929 Ford Model A Custom in his garage. It's a pickup on a stretch frame and made to look like an old police paddy wagon. This isn't going to be your average paddy wagon. If you know who George Barris was, then you know exactly the look Wayne is going for. For those of you who don't know who George Barris was, he was a creative mind behind such iconic TV and film cars like the original Batmobile and the Munsters Mobile. So that about does it for this episode of the Average Joe Hot Rod Show. Remember everybody, kick butt, take names, but most importantly, kill with kindness. See you next time.